You know, if I mention the name Bill Cosby, or I mention the name Bruce Jenner, or John Gotti, or Brad Pitt, believe it or not, all these people have something in common. By the end of this conversation, you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. Last week, last week I was talking to my son, and he tells me, you know, Dad, everyone shot his text. Come on. I said, I don't, I, I, I'm not understanding. I think they call it sexting now. I don't know how, what, what the term is. <laughs> Never heard of it. I, I said, explain this concept to me. This concept of, of texting on Shabbos. Do people walk around and flip on a TV? Well, no, it's different. It's different. It's just a quick text. Whatever. And I said, no, you don't understand what that means. Forget the, forget the halachic infraction of breaking Shabbos. I used the she knew we, it has a grama. Forget all that nonsense. It's not true anyway. But what's so bad about texting on Shabbos? What's so bad when you're really hot at night and you just want to hit the thermostat down a little bit? I've been there. In fact, I was with a guy who said, it's, it's, for, it's for Shabbos Kaidish. I can't have a Shabbos. I can't sleep. I can't have a Torah says, So we can justify anything. So the question is, what is so bad about it? What is so bad about it? And when you think about someone like Bruce Jenner, does anyone, does everyone here know who Bruce Jenner is, Hans? Not anymore. No, Kate, there you go. <laughs> exactly. Bruce Jenner was probably one of the greatest athletes that ever lived, and for whatever the reason, he decided to become a woman. And he has had, he has had a sex change, and the, the topics that went on in conversations were, which bathroom should he use, or why can't people treat him correctly, there should be no discrimination, whatever you want to call it. And most people today, they don't really want to say anything negative about him. They don't want to say anything at all. Is he gay? Is he not gay? Is that okay? Nothing makes sense, but no one can say anything. Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby, for those of you who don't know, was America's sweetheart. He had a great reputation, a number one television show, one of the wealthiest performers in the world, and more than that, he unfortunately drugged and took advantage of women in a very bad way. Okay? Now, after the 25th or 30th time, you still had at least 30 to 50% of the people that would be asked, particularly in the African-American community, or the celebrities, white or black, and they all said the same thing. I'm not sure about it. I don't know if he did that. Then the 30th, but Whoopi Goldberg comes back. I, I need more proof. 30 women that were raped, that's not enough doesn't make any sense. Go ahead, look at Brad and Angelina. Brad and Angelina, for those of you who don't know, they were very, very famous 10 or 15 years ago. I think they're still famous, Brad and Pitt. They had an affair. Nobody cares. They are the number one couple that was pictured on magazine covers for at least 10 years. Now, you know that Frank Sinatra in 1953, yeah, not 1950, he had an affair with Ava Gardner. He was the number one singer in the world. You know what happened to him? He was completely obliterated. His reputation was destroyed because he had an affair, an illicit relationship. You don't do these things. And today, what happens with Brad and Angelina? They're on the front cover of every magazine. It doesn't make any sense. Even further, does anyone know who John Gotti is? John Gotti was, I believe, he was probably the worst gangster in the 1990s. And I think he took out the Castellano family. He assassinated and killed many, many people. But what Dapper Don did was he changed his reputation to becoming a celebrity. And he would go out in fancy suits and everybody in the neighborhood loved him and everyone rooted for him. But at the end of the day, the, day, the guy was a massive killer. What do what these, all these things have in common? That the lines are very gray. That the lines are very blurred. And just like Shabbos texting, which we don't think is really a big deal anymore because look what's going on in the world. I have met people that live in the Upper West Side that wear yarmulkes, and I'm walking home from school with them, and they just push the elevator button. They push number 15. I, I, like as if, and he says, I'm from. I, I said, how, what do you mean you're from? How, could you, how can you tell me that you're keeping Shabbos and you're pushing that? What's the difference if I go and I get in the car? And if I'm going, well, if you're going, there was a, a, a conservative rabbi that said, class, you're not allowed to go in a car on Shabbos. But if it has Torah tapes or Jewish music, then it's a different story. Do you understand what's happening here? Do you understand what's happening here in public that a man would say that and get a standing ovation? So let's talk about it. Now we're going to really get into the, to, to the bottom, to the guts of what I'm talking about. I noticed that if you look at several mitzvahs in the Torah, perhaps most of them, they all have one common ingredient. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read them out to you, and you're going to start seeing something. Milk, meat. Very big sin to keep not kosher. Shabbos, we say, Havdalah, Hamavdil ben Kodesh l'chol. There's the holy, and then there's the, the regular, the whole, the weekday. 
Marriage. You marry a Jewish girl, or you marry a shiksa. A machitza, you go into a shul. There's the men, there's the women. Shotness, shotness. Wool, linen, not together. Very serious stuff here. We know when a woman is Anita, you separate. Now, what, what's interesting about all these things is that the punishment for them is pretty serious. We take it pretty darn seriously. And all of these things have one thing in common. There's a separation, there's a line that's drawn in the sand. Why? For two reasons. This is my opinion now. The first is to prevent what we just discussed, the blurred lines. The idea that the truth is, if you do something, the media, society, our rationalizations and intellectualizations can create something that's bad and to turn it into something that's not so bad. I actually called a radio station a couple of years ago and I foolishly said, um, well, I don't know. I, I, I think that two women together is, is just wrong and two men together, it, it's wrong. And they were like ostracized me. Who, what, what, what? I'm like, wait a minute, whoa, whoa, whoa. There was a time, there was a time, and I'm, I'm sure that your grandparents, everyone can remember this, if a guy married a non-Jew, they ripped Kriya. That's what they did. You were, you were out, you were done with. You want to carry on and do illicit things? You were shunned, Sinatra, you're done. The Goyim didn't accept Sinatra when he did that. He had to go on PR tours, he had to restart his whole life over again, and thank God, uh, society changed along with it. I'm sure he helped that with his promiscuity, not just him, but the, all of them in general, all of the ho Hollywood types. And so then it became acceptable to the point where now Angelina and Brad can be together on the cover of a magazine, and there's nothing wrong. Bill Cosby, he didn't do anything wrong with 30 women. 35, well, maybe. I, but even then, I'm not sure. You see, it blurred the lines. Comes Hashem and says, no, 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 no. We have to separate. This is good, this is bad. But now there's a second reason. What would be the second reason that God would do this? And that would be to raise ourselves, to elevate ourselves. What does that mean? To become an Am Kadosh. But what does that mean? Look at Noah in the Torah. We all know that, Moab, that Noah walked with Hashem. But we also know that Abraham walked ahead of God. What does that mean? So we know that we have the seven mitzvah, the name Noah. We have the seven mitzvah of Noah. And that's basically laws that were set up, set up a court system, don't kill, don't commit adultery, don't do idolatry. It's to stay out of trouble. That's what Noah's job was. Noah's job, the Gentile's job, is to behave yourself and stay out of trouble. But God wanted more. God needed something more. So he went all over to all the nations and he said, hey, would you take the Torah? Would you take the Torah? Well, what is it? Well, it's got like these 613 commandments. I know you're doing seven of them, but it's just a little bit more. No, thank you. So everyone said, no, 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 no. And then the Jew. The Jew was in trouble. The Jew was in a small nation. Abraham had done his thing. Yaakov, Isaac, everyone had shown that they have something, but they needed something more. They needed a Moshe Rabbeinu to give them the Torah. And what that Torah was, was 613 minutes. Now, two things are being accomplished. The first thing is, we're removing the blurred line by saying, yes, no, yes, no, black, white. Yes, it has to be that way. It has to be that it's Shabbos until this time. It has to be that if there's chametz in your house, you have to burn it. And if someone's caught with it, you kill them, or, you, or, you, or whatever they do with it. It's a very, what is the, what is the punishment if you're eating chametz on Current. Current. Current, you're done with, he can't deal with you, why? because you're gonna get into a situation where, hey, I'm just turning on the light on Shabbos, it's no big deal. Guess what, I have friends that did that when they were your age. They're married now and their kids are not from anymore. That's how it works. God knows what he's doing. He's setting up a model of how your life is to lead. You can still be wild, you can still have a good time, you can still do all the great things, but there are certain things that you can't bend because then it becomes gray. And when gray, you, you can't have Torah, you can't have your accomplishment. What is your accomplishment? To reach a closeness with God. How do you do that? These are the mitzvahs. Example, well, when you put on tefillin, what's really happening? All you're really saying is, my strength and my brain, my mind, my thoughts, my intellect, are not only should they be devoted to you, but in fact, they come from you. So you are, uh, you are accomplishing by putting on this thing, oh, forget all the mystical ramifications, the shame Hashem, forget that he told you to do it. That for sure, that's already a given, but you're getting something out of it. You're getting it. Forget the bracha. You're getting that too. But you're getting something out of it. You're connecting. Shabbos. You can have every single day. I love people that say, I can't keep Shabbos. Let me ask you a question. I keep not Shabbos six days a week. A guy that doesn't keep Shabbos, what does he have over me? I do the same things that he does. Except one day a week, I say, whoa, I'm done with this. I got to stop and recharge. 
Shabbos is the absolute most wonderful thing. Now, I used to, I'll be honest with you. I'm always looking at the watch. I, I, I did my shul, I had my chillin', I passed out. I can't have like another eight hours, so I'm gonna have a nervous breakdown. Because I didn't get it, I wasn't understanding what Shabbos was all about. It's, it's actually wonderful. And the older you get, and the harder that you work, the more you really will appreciate it. Because Shabbos is nothing more than not only acknowledging that Hashem created the world for six days and on the seventh day he rests, but also that just like Hashem worked, he stopped and he looked back at what he did. He got perspective. And that is the bottom line here. The big deal is that why, when I started this conversation, did I say, is it so important not to text on Shabbos? Why is it such a big deal? Because it starts off with a little thing. I'm just gonna take her out. Every guy that married a shiks has said the same thing. I was just friends with her. I didn't know this was gonna happen. Well, what did you think was gonna, hello, McFly, anybody home? What did you think was gonna happen? It's ridiculous. So the answer is, guys, you want to be solid, you want to have a great wife, you want to have great... I love these guys, they have these kids, they don't understand. Oh, you wonder why your daughter's walking around dressed like that? Look at the girl you married, you animal. What did you think was going to happen? What do you... It's very simple. God sets up the genetics. He sets up the Torah. He sets up the principles. He sets up a guideline to life. You could do whatever you want. But then don't come around 25 years later and say, I don't understand why my children are marrying conservatox or reform or nothing or, or why they're doing this anymore. Well, because we, you know, when you were hot and you hit the thermostat or my friend used to do this, this was his move. Oh, what's on there? NBA or whatever's playing. And he would chuck a pillow at the TV and it would turn on. And everyone would laugh, you know, therefore it was justified. And I would be like, why is he doing that? Like, he doesn't have to do that. And if he really was a junkie, he could have left it on. He didn't have to do that. Well, guess what? It's 25 years later. His kids are not very from. I don't even think he knows that. But the answer is it all started at the beginning. And this is the lesson that God teaches us. This is why separation and all of the mitzvah is for our benefit. To not only to remove the blurred lines, but also to elevate us to the point where we can reach HaKadosh Baruch Thank you for letting me speak.